April 17th, Daily Video Bible Reading from the Net Bible, Psalms chapters 35 and 36 from the Old Testament. O Lord, fight those who fight with me, attack those who attack me. Grab your small shield and large shield and rise up to help me. Use your spear and lance against those who chase me. Assure me with these words, I am your deliverer. May those who seek my life be embarrassed and humiliated. May those who plan to harm me be turned back and ashamed. May they be like wind-driven chaff as the Lord's angel attacks them. May their path be dark and slippery as the Lord's angel chases them. I did not harm them, but they hid a net to catch me and dug a pit to trap me. Let destruction take them by surprise. Let the net they hid catch them. Let them fall into destruction. Then I will rejoice in the Lord and be happy because of his deliverance. With all my strength, I will say, O Lord, who can compare to you? You rescue the oppressed from those who try to overpower them, the oppressed and needy from those who try to rob them. Violent men perjure themselves and falsely accuse me. They repay me evil for the good I have done. I am overwhelmed with sorrow. When they were sick, I wore sackcloth and refrained from eating food. If I am lying, may my prayers go unanswered. I mourn for them as I would for a friend or my brother. I bowed down in sorrow as if were mourning for my mother. But when I stumbled, they rejoiced and gathered together. They gathered together to ambush me. They tore at me without stopping to rest. When I tripped, they taunted me relentlessly and tried to bite me. O oh Lord, how long are you going to just stand there and watch this? Rescue me from their destructive attacks. Guard my life from the young lions. Then I will give you thanks. In the great assembly, I will praise you before a large crowd of people. Do not let those who are my enemies for no reason gloat over me. Do not let those who hate me without cause carry out their wicked schemes. For they do not try to make peace with others, but plan ways to deceive those who are unsuspecting. They are ready to devour me. They say, aha, aha, we've got you. But you take notice, Lord. O oh, Lord, do not remain far away from me. Rouse yourself, wake up and vindicate me. My God and Lord, defend my just cause. Vindicate me by your justice, O oh, Lord, my God. Do not let them gloat over me. Do not let them say to themselves, Aha, we have what we wanted. Do not let them say we have devoured him. May those who want to harm me be totally embarrassed and ashamed. May those who arrogantly taunt me be covered with shame and humiliation. May those who desire my vindication shout for joy and rejoice. May they continually say, May the Lord be praised, for he wants his servant to be secure. Then I will tell others about your justice and praise you all day long. An evil man is rebellious to the core. He does not fear God, for he is too proud to recognize and give up his sin. The words he speaks are sinful and deceitful. He does not care about doing what is wise and right. He plans ways to sin while he lies in bed. He is committed to a sinful lifestyle. He does not reject what is evil. O oh Lord, your loyal love reaches to the sky, your faithfulness to the clouds. Your justice is like the highest mountains, your fairness like the deepest sea. You preserve mankind and the animal kingdom. How precious is your loyal love, O oh God! The human race finds shelter under your wings. They are filled with food from your house, and you allow them to drink from the river of your delicacies. For you are the one who gives and sustains life. Extend your loyal love to your faithful followers and vindicate the morally upright. Do not let arrogant men overtake me or let evil men make me homeless. I can see the evildoers. They have fallen. They have been knocked down and are unable to get up. God, these verses couldn't be more timely. As... Lately, my heart has just been heavy with it feels like just attacks. And, and unfortunately, lately, it's been attacks from other Christians, which is just baffling unto itself. I know Psalms 35 isn't written for the Christian who uh, 
sometimes sins like we all do uh, that is where grace and forgiveness happens of course but some Christians want to say that we shouldn't pray for these things really because it's in your Bible the book you gave us on how to live our lives it's in our Bible that we should ask you to take out the evilness in our lives to help stop it curb it whatever you need to do with with the person or people who are causing it we have every right to ask you when it is that level of attack and persecution against us and sometimes those are Christians and sometimes they need to be confronted just like it says in Matthew hey what what are you doing <laughs> And my prayers would probably be, God, you've got to get them to stop. Please, I know it is not anywhere in your will for them to be behaving this way and persecuting other people and denouncing you. And 36 goes on to talk about words that are sinful and deceitful and a person or groups of people who are committed to, to sinful lifestyles that they don't reject what is evil. I truly think that we live in a society that everything is so diluted that there is no sense of right and wrong anymore at all. A, a quick check at any social media page can tell you that. What people approve of now is nowhere close to what you've told us is okay in the Bible. In fact, a lot of it is what you've told us clearly is not okay, is a sin in the Bible. Chapter 36 goes on to say, Do not let arrogant men overtake me or let evil men make me homeless. Amazingly, you're not talking about arrogance in the sense of, of what we talk about, somebody who's stuck up, somebody who thinks higher than themselves. You're talking about arrogance of going up against the word of God. Plain and simple. <laughs> And I can't believe how many of us miss the agenda of today. How many people are going directly up against you. And we should have every right to pray to you to take those type of situations down, to stop them, to do whatever needs to happen to stop this evil agenda. I think a lot of times people are very naive that Satan is incredibly active in this world. I don't know if they think he's not real or if we say his name, then things won't happen. But all you have to do is look around you and see how easily he has turned the hearts and mind of so many people. It even talks about that in these chapters. God, I pray first and foremost for discernment. I pray for discernment of all Christians that they understand the difference of rebuking somebody, of going to your fellow brother and sister in Christ and saying, yeah, no, <laughs> you can't do that. That's in the Bible. I pray for a discernment of understanding when and why to go to somebody like that. Too often lately, I've had Christians say, oh, we can't do that because you know the whole log in your own eye. I always pray to you first and foremost, God, before I go and talk to anybody. And it is only out of love, not personal agenda, that I'm going to talk to them. It is because I love them as one of your children, and I don't want to see them messing up. <laughs> I don't want to rejoice in watching them stumble, just like Psalms 35, 36 was talking about. So I pray for discernment. I sadly too often watch people go, yeah, I'm not going to do that because I don't want to get involved. Yeah, I don't want to do that because they won't like me anymore. Yeah, I don't want to do that because they'll be upset. But it's our responsibility. It's our responsibility to love them enough to stop them in what they're doing. As for our non-Christian brothers and sisters, I do pray for them as well, obviously. But if they have an evil agenda that's going up against what you have clearly told me is wrong and versus right. 
then I am most definitely going to pray to you to stop it in any way possible. And amazingly, I know that you'll answer those prayers. I'm going to say something that's going to make a lot of Christians listen to this mad. <laughs> What's new? I think Christians are too nice. I think they're too nice for all the wrong reasons. I think they're too nice selfishly. If you truly loved other people, if you truly cared about other people, if you truly wanted what God wanted for them, you, out of love, would stop them from doing what they're doing. You would understand that there's a big difference between worldly arrogance and arrogance going up against our God. Two totally different things. And you should love those people enough to go to them and say, you need to stop this. What can I do to help as your fellow brother and sister in Christ? This has to be stopped. To the people who aren't Christian yet, our responsibility is to love them. And tell them about the amazing creator whose love we received first so that we can love them. It's not that I am better than anybody else. In fact, far, far, far from it. It's just, if God is going to love somebody like me, who messes up all the time, and disciplines me when I mess up so that I learn, and he does that out of love, the Bible's pretty clear that we're responsible for doing that too, with discernment, with grace. And grace doesn't mean that you cower because you're afraid of what people will think. Sorry, God. I think I got on a little bit of soapbox there. <laughs> it's just come up too much lately, God, as you know in my life. And I know that you're trying to show me something. I don't know if I'm supposed to be more impassioned about this. I don't know if I'm supposed to teach more about this. I don't know what it is, but it's so telling and timely that these two chapters in Psalms come up right now. Because they're exactly what's been happening in my life. I just pray that you show me more about what that lesson is, God. Show me more about that evil agenda versus your pure agenda. And what part I play in that. God, I pray for everybody today who's listening. That they understand that we fear our almighty God more than anybody else in the world. I really don't care if somebody isn't going to like me. If out of love I come to them and I'm trying to help them. Because I know God will figure that part out. We're so worried about everyone else. When the only person in the entire world that we should be worried about is God and our relationship with him. Everything else falls into place including our love for everyone else. God, thank you. Thank you for letting me say what I needed to say that was in my heart today. Again, I'm still very agitated about this. I'm agitated that fellow Christians still aren't getting the urgency of this, still aren't understanding what love, what true love really is. And I think I'm most saddened by this kind of dumbing down of Christianity, this dilution of trying to fit you into our lives. Again, I, I'm not really sure where all of this going and this lesson's going, but I do know the fact that these two verses came up in perfect timing for when I need them speaks volumes that your hand is in all of this, as always. <laughs> God, I love you. Put me to work. Whatever you need me to do, I am here. Send me. In your son's name I pray. Amen.